Welcome everybody. Um, this is our first of two in a series of workshops for educators. Um, my name is Ellen Dow and I am part of the user engagement team for the Department of Energy Systems Biology Knowledge Base, um, or as we like to call KBase for short. Uh, today I am joined by Jason Witham, who is a member of our KBase educators community, as well as our working group. He is an educator at North Carolina State University. So welcome, Jason. Thank you for being here with us today. And so today we are going to walk through some resources of the KBase educators org. Um, all these resources have been created by working groups within the educators community. So these are resources from educators, for educators, and this workshop series is designed to do more of an in-depth demo and walkthrough for everybody um, to highlight these resources and answer any questions for those of you who are new to our community and looking for more support um, for teaching with KBase. Um, so please ask your questions in our Q&A document, um, which I have linked within the chat, sharing that again. Um, so feel free to answer, ask any questions in there. Um, we have some staff standing by to answer those questions as we go through it. And, um, and I also wanted to just say, you know, if you would like to um, follow along with us within the KBase um, Educators Org, uh, please feel free to sign in. Um, if you just go to our website, www.kbase.us, uh, sign up or um, log in, you'll get to the login page. Um, if you have not already joined the KBase Educators Org, uh, please make sure you um, go to the, your orgs within KBase. Once you've logged in, uh, click on all orgs, um, which is over here. If you have not signed in, search for KBase Educators. Um, hit the little search icon, and then this is the uh, org that you want to join. Um, so once you um, select that, feel free to um, click on it and request to join. Uh, my colleague Zach will be admitting people during uh, the webinar today. Um, and of course, if you are watching this as a recording, there is, um, we do have some instructions on how to uh, join. So if you have um, not already joined and are watching this later, um, later in, in the day or a few weeks later, um, please email us at engage at kbase.us, uh, sign up or into your kbase account, search for all orgs for the kbase educators org and request to join, uh, then send us an email. Um, so when you email engage at kbase.us, let us know that you would like to join the educators org. Um, please provide your username so we can equate that um, with your email and let us know when and what you're teaching so we can uh, best support you. And as well, if you would like to um, connect with other educators. And so with that, um, while you are joining the org or asking to join, uh, what we are going to walk through today are, um, is more of a tour of the educators org. So I'll be walking through what's in there, the different resources that we have available to the members of our community of educators, um, as well as a best practices guide. Um, so this is something that our team has um, put together, both educators and, um, and the KBase team to compile a lot of different resources into one spot, as well as giving some recommendations. And then we, um, after that, I will turn it over to Jason, who will go through a specific, specific use case and do some more demoing for everybody. Um, and then once uh, we've reached the end of our more um, live demo portion, we'll start addressing more questions and anything that has not already been answered in the Q&A document. So if you do have any questions that come up, um, so you do not forget them, uh, please pop those into the Q&A doc. Um, we have KBase team members as well as some educators who are um, on the call and will be answering uh, those questions uh, during, during throughout the presentation. So with that, I'm going to get started. Um, and here is our Q&A doc. So please um, feel free to drop your questions in there. I just, whoops. Um, 
make sure I'm sending this to everybody. I am the Q&A doc, and that link is in the chat for everybody to see. Okay. So, um, as a reminder, so this is the Department of Energy Systems Biology Knowledge Base. Um, which we call KBase, is a free and open access data science platform that houses many different bioinformatics and analytical tools and workflows that enables our users to analyze and share data, along with supporting collaboration um, and effort to build biological models for research. So KBase itself is built upon a reproducible Jupyter notebook, which does allow users to import data and select different tools to analyze the data within user interface that we call the narrative. And so it's this narrative um, which acts like a lab notebook um, as it can be shared, copied, rerun, and published um, as well with static unchanging workflows um, that we have figured out how to uh, use for education. And so it was just about a year ago to the day um, on August uh, 19th uh 2020 that we actually first showed these resources and discussed them with our community and so after um this last year of piloting all of these different resources um with our group of educators who are part of our working group um, and our educator community um, we've actually been able to um, refine and use more and develop even more resources for everybody and so today we are going to go through all of these, um, some of the different um, really in-depth how-tos on using the different narratives that we've developed for teaching, as well as navigating through KBase as an educator for the first time. And so first, I just wanted to kind of give, you know, if you are just joining us and you want to follow along, um, if you sign into KBase, uh, make sure you go to the educators org. So you'll click here on this orgs icon, uh, go to search for K-based educators, make sure you're not filtering for the organizations that you belong to, but for all the orgs, search and select this, um, this organization. And once you are in the organization, uh, the default page shows here um, these different narratives as well as and about. So here is our little explanation on what the K-based educators work is. Um, it does include the instructions on how to join, um, you know, sending an email to engage at kbase.us. And um, you can see different members who are in the community. Um, and once I uh, see or my colleague Zach sees that we have any requests, we'll make sure that you are added to the organization and then can access these different narratives. Um, when you first see a narrative, it will not, you'll have to click on a button that does ask you um, if you want to view it, because unless you have access to actually edit directly, you will need to click on those different, on, onto the, um, onto that button to first access and be able to view those narratives themselves. And so within uh, the KBase Educators Org are a few different types of narratives. So we have teaching narratives, which are for students and or instructors. Um, some of these include additional documentation when they're for instructors. Uh, we will be going through a lot more of these uh, different workflows that we have housed in here during the second workshop in the series. And then there are also supporting narratives. These narratives include documentation, such as um, how to use Markdown, how to maintain different orgs, um, we even have a student introduction into KBase, which I will show you. And then um, these narratives are not just provided by those in the educators org um, who are in the part of the working group. Um, they are all supplied by those educators who are part of the educators org. Um, but we do have some other uh, classes that have been shared in here. So if you are interested in sharing a narrative um, or adding it to, you are more than welcome. These are for our community members, um, by our community members. So we definitely open, we welcome um, anyone who wants to contribute to these different resources that we have for everybody. And then, um, so within here, I want to highlight just a few of the different narratives. Uh, so 
we do have this um, bioinformatics teaching resource flow. Um, this workflow is what I'll walk through more. So on the next workshop, but this one is great. It has um, our different topics. Uh, the narratives are linked in here and it also has our learning objectives. So for each of these different narratives that we've developed, we do have um, different learning objectives that we've assigned to each of the modules. And the modules are all built on the narrative itself um, using Markdown and um, as well as the data and the app cells that are within the narrative. And so we have a few different examples um, between the teaching narratives as well as supporting documentation. So within supporting documentation, we have narratives like this one, which is a module skeleton. Um, this also includes a markdown guide, which is very handy. Um, in addition to having the markdown guide here, which if you were to make a copy, um, so if I um, am in view mode, I can make a copy by clicking here. And um, so I can make my own copy. So I could say like, I could put like version two or, um, and I can make a copy of this narrative. And then I can also open the new narrative. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but once I have that and I am in edit mode, I can open up and see what's behind the markdown. And so in here, you can actually see the different, um, the markdown language and this, some of the HTML language that is used um, to make these different texts and image cells. And then to look, click out of that, just click out and you can see, oh wow, all these wonderful hues of pink, um, even an image that is stored in here. And this is also linked within our narrative user, narrative interface user guide. Um, so within here, um, which is docs.kbase.us, there are, there's a full walkthrough on how to use Kbase full documentation. And this includes um, our format, how to format markdown cells, which includes a formatting cheat sheet narrative, which includes that cell that I just showed you within the educators module. Um, this, this example. Um, there's also within the educators org, as I said, a student introduction to KBase. So this comes from some requests on how to first introduce students to using KBase. This is a fairly short example. Um, fairly short narrative. It has some resource shortcuts, including our YouTube page, the, doc the documentation page, which includes that guide to using the narrative, also the guide to using Markdown, how to share narratives um, between, like if students were to share narratives with their instructors, also how to get help from KBase itself. Within the uh, narrative, we also have, there's also a, um, also some activities for students to do, such as adding data, um, including the supporting documentation on how to add data, how to run an app, and a little activity on using Markdown. And it gives the instructions to double click on the box um, and then add the different colors. And even includes a handy link to a place where you can find hex codes, um, which is how you would color code the different Markdown languages. Additionally, within the K-Based Educators Org, we also have um, some different resources for educators. Um, these include notes, which we have stored in a um, Google folder. So please, um, this is why um, it's important to send us an email so we can let you have access to these different resources. Uh, this includes uh, surveys. So we have a few example surveys, um, such as you know, what topics have students done, what level are you at? It asks, how new is this material for students? Um, and so these are all accessible and available for educators. And then one of the most important things that we have is the best practices guide. And so before I turn it over to Jason, I want to go through a few of the different items that we have in here. Um, we have the instructions on how to join the educators org. 
Um, also how to access a narrative. So if you haven't opened a narrative before or a specific narrative, which is in the educators org, you can click on the click for access or view for access button. Once you click on that button, you can then click on the narrative name to open it. And it also describes a few different other icons that you'll see within the educators org. We've also have um, our K-based users, um, Black Workspace, and even an a dedicated channel for educators themselves. Um, if you're new to Slack um, and not very familiar with using it, you can also access a, a quick start guide um, that we have linked in here. Uh, in addition to these different resources, we also have some examples of teaching logistics. So we have walk through the instructions on how to create an org for your class, how to copy and share narratives um, within for just an org, or if you're sharing it with another instructor. And we also um, we have some suggestions on how to set up your course. So if you um, have different needs for your students, if you're doing more of a cooking show where you want to walk through and demonstrate some different examples, or if you really want to go in and have students do um, most of the work by themselves. Um, it really depends. And the great thing about the narrative is that it's set up to have those training wheels and then be able to back off and remove any of the scaffolding that you've built in or what is already built into the teaching narrative that we have within, within the org itself. We, we do have some examples and um, and notes within our teaching narratives on how long different runs take, so how long a module might take, which is great for planning. Um, so we typically supply those within the narrative itself, um, but there's always the option to already have run apps and have the data within the narrative before sharing with students so that there's a few, a few less steps for them, um, but you can still have the opportunity for them to run and to examine what the output of all of those different analyses are. And then lastly, within this narrative, we have some different resources to share with students. Um, this is great for when your students are first getting oriented. This includes an intro to K-based webinar, which is on our YouTube page, um, those documentation pages, the intro activity narrative, which I showed earlier, as well as help and, um, and a link for our student feedback form, which can be copied and edited. Um, as needed. So now I'm going to switch it over to Jason, who will walk through a use case. Um, and once we've gone through that, we'll then open the floor for more questions. Thanks, Ellen. Let me just switch to here. Hey, good morning, my West Side folks, and good afternoon to East Side folks, and thank you all for joining us today. My name is uh, Jason Witham, and I'm a postdoc at NC State University. I'm studying the rhizosphere microbes in bioeconomy crops. And I've had the privilege to present uh, a couple of times now on how we utilize KBase to teach undergrad and grad students key metagenomics concepts. Um, by we, I'm referring to Carlos Goyer, who is uh, my mentor and colleague, and uh, also an active member of the K-Base Educators Group. He'll be helping me field questions today, uh, as well as, I think, uh, Professor Aaron Shermer from Northeast Illinois, if he's on. Today, I'll be walking you through one of the narratives Carlos and I used in our class. Um, I will summarize the content to avoid taking up too much time and boring those of you interested in many of the other bioinformatics areas that KBase features. I will discuss how we engaged our students and list key concepts the students learned. Then I will share some best practices when teaching in the KBase environment. And lastly, I will demo how to copy and adapt a narrative and change markdown cell content. So from here, you go to the main web page. You'll click this uh, login after you've signed up. If you haven't signed up yet, you have to sign up first, like Ellen was saying, and then you click the login. And then uh, it'll bring you to your narratives page. 
And within this, you have your narratives, shared ones with you, tutorials, and public narratives. So under my narratives, I just clicked the uh, silver grass narrative, and that takes me to this page after it loads. I didn't want you guys to have to wait for the loading. It doesn't take very long, but it's just airtime. So in this narrative, students are introduced to Miscanthus gigantus, which is a tall perennial grass. I am at the wrong part of this narrative. Here we go. Uh, students are introduced to Miscanthus gigantus, which is a tall perennial grass that is being developed around the world uh, as a crop to make biofuels and chemicals. Uh, we provide the students publicly available metagenomics data and ask them to assemble reeds into contigs, bin those into mags, extract, annotate, and identify the taxonomy of a high quality mag, and then finally determine what media ingredients they would need to isolate and cultivate this bacteria from the rhizosphere. So what engages, what engages the students are the pictures that I have in this narrative. So you see like I've got some of these nice introductory pictures, workflow pictures, sections of workflow pictures, and even at the end, I have taken a, a page off of, uh, off of DSMZ to show them some media formulation. And also the nice sequential formatting of a narrative is engaging, but I think the most engaging aspect is the ability that KBase provides to tell a story. And in our case, the students are mining for plant growth promoting and pathogen antagonists, which is something they could find themselves doing at one of the local biotech, uh, biotech companies in the RTP. So we recommend that you find a story that is impactful. Um, having this big picture in mind makes it easier for students to relate bioinformatics steps uh, to things that they can understand um, on their own outside of the workflow the bioinformatics steps might appear detached or intimidating. Um, instead, they learn all of these things here. I won't read these to you, but you can see a lot of things that they learn in the narrative. So now let's talk about a few best practices. Um, I recommend, and some of this Ellen shared with you, but I'm just going to say some of the things that I think are pretty especially important when you're teaching in the K-based environment. Have a word on timing as a, a markdown cell, and this tells your students how long they can expect to wait for apps to run. Uh, otherwise, you may be fielding lots of emails. Perform uh, a cooking show uh, with apps that take a long time to finish. And what, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, in a cooking show, you, you see the cook pull out uh, a fully finished casserole dish out from underneath the table. And, uh, and right before he slides in a unbaked uh, casserole into the oven. And so what you should do is you want to run really long apps and then have your students uh, go through the parameters, add parameters to uh, different application cells, and then click the run button. And I can show you just as a, as a example application, something like Keju. You know, if you do the view configure, you might have them add the different uh, objects into uh, one of these applications and then click the run button here. This is reset right now, but normally it's the run button before an application is uh, run. And then uh, after it's done, um, they can look at their own data, but you already have something completed to analyze in class and you're not waiting for an application to finish. Um, I recommend providing references uh, both for applications that are in here. Um, so I have those here in the breakdown of the narrative section and then references to 
different studies that you have in your narrative. And you know, that's important, I think, for uh, students who want to who wanna dive deeper into what your narrative is telling them. And then uh, have, it, have a URL for JIRA for them so that when an app fails or when they're having uh, issues with executing their app, that's not, uh, that's not trivial uh, because KBase is under development all the time and sometimes apps fail and it's unclear sometimes why that's the case. There is a fully funded help desk that they can message. And also within that, there's all of these uh, questions that other users have submitted and have been answered. And so usually they can find an answer to what they're looking for there, or uh, the help desk is very responsive, quick to respond to the questions. And then finally, I, I highly recommend that you join the educators org. I mean, there's lots of friendly down to earth folks that love to, to share. Uh, so uh, Ellen already showed you how to do that. I highly recommend you do that. So now let's do the demo of how you can take a narrative and adapt it for teaching in your own class. And, and Ellen already showed you when you're within a narrative, how you can click that copy button that's you know, somewhere around here in this section of the page. But I'm gonna show you from this narrative screen. So if you wanna grab the, the silver narrative, you can go to public, and then type in the search bar, KBase Silver. And then it'll appear right here. You can just click it. And then you see this cog icon. You click that, there's a copy this narrative. And I can just say, I was just gonna call it Silver Copy. Okay, so that'll take just a second. And then I go into my narratives, refresh the page. Oop, come on. Well, <laughs> sometimes it does that, but I promise you, uh, you know, if I if I waited long enough, or uh, if I exited out of this this uh, out of K base and relogged in, it would appear. There we go. So if I now click the silver copy, this is a, uh, yep, so there we go. And now if I wanna make this, say I'm somebody else and I wanna make this my own narrative for my class, I can just start double clicking into these markdown cells and start editing. You know, I can just delete this and make it mine. So that's how you do that. And I think now we are ready for some questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason, for walking through that. Um, so let's see. I, we can either go through some of the questions that are, are in our Q&A doc. Um, we can also answer any questions um, live right now. I see, uh, I see some people asking some questions right now. Um, but I can go through first. Um, we do have a question on, does the K-based team vet any contributed non-K-based narratives? If so, how? Um, so the answer to that is um, not necessarily if people make their own narratives public. However, those narratives that are asked to um, be shared with the K-based educators org, they do have to be approved by an admin. And then um, for a question, if this is a notebook or where can modules be run? Um, thank you again, Jason, for the overview and um, where uh, it, um, the, yeah, the answer is that the narrative is both. Um, it is both a, um, we've, we've created some resources that act more as a landing page that serve as a place to share um, how to get to other narratives. 
So if I share my screen and show you all the um, this landing page again, in here we have a few different um, modules, and so I will we will be we will walk through these more in our second um, in our second example. But if I wanted to show the metagenomics um, narratives, what I can do is click on this and this will open the new narrative. And these are all fed together in more of a choose your own adventure type of pipeline. So within this narrative, this goes through more on the data importation and a quality check. So we do have the supporting information on all the background information, as well as some data that has been imported into this narrative. Now within each of these narratives are the different steps with some supporting information. So you have some instruction on what to do for students and what to do once they get into this step. And then um, once they've done those, we also have questions that are included within the narrative. And so these are all educator narratives. So these ones do have run apps within them. So there is a result. Um, within this first narrative, there is an assess quality run, and this goes through um, to a, um, this goes through the first step of, um, if you were to import your data, run a quality check, and then go through, trim those reads, um, and then rerun the quality check again. And from this narrative, um, it goes to a second, which is based on more on assembly. We'll go through these more on our second um, workshop. I just want to make sure that we have plenty of time for any Q and A. Um, so that's a great question of the assembler apps for long read sequence data. Um, currently, that is um, in um, or in um, progress of being added to KBase. Um, not at the moment. But we actually have an example of that um, within our KBase educators org. Um, let's see. Uh, so one of our educators um, with, within the metabolic modeling um, for assembly for, I believe it is Nanopore. Um, actually used Actually used Canu, I believe, um, to assemble um, some long pieces of DNA. And let me scroll down. Yes, so um, Tim used um, Ox. He used Canu, and in this narrative, there are instructions on using Canu. So he wrote up some very detailed examples of how to do this. So there is that example. Um, if you are within the educators workshop and interested in accessing that, if you go to the concept workflow, um, this, this does have the link to all of those narratives within it, so you can access that. Um, okay, um, so I, we do have some metagenomic um, examples um, within the metagenomic workflow. Um, there are, if you, you can read through, um, yeah, Jason. I can, I can share something in, in my narrative that might be helpful for that question. Oh, awesome. I'll, yeah, I'll so stop the, sharing. The, the, um, If you want to, see this work. So after you've um, got your reads in and you've assembled them, there's a nice, uh, there's a nice, there's several nice binning utilities in KBase. I just used two here. Um, there's also uh, DOS tools, which, uh, which can actually take uh, pieces of the different uh, binning results and uh, put them together for even higher quality bins. And then you can actually, uh, like you're asking, parse out 
the uh, individual bins with a bin utility tool called bin extract. And so that is here. Yep, bin extract. And how that works under the view configure. You put your, your bin contigs here, and then there will be a list of um, a list that you can search from. So you, you know from your check M file what uh, the binner has called your bin. So if it's bin 0.009.fasta, you would then click plus, and then it would appear as a minus in the selected items. And then you run the app with, uh, if you have multiple bins, you'll have an assembly set name as well as just the assembly name. And so from there, you can do your downstream analyses like uh, phylogenomics or, um, or if you want to annotate, like further annotate this genome and search through it and things like that, you can do other, other uh, processing. Thanks, Jason. No problem. I'm just answering a question, sharing the um, Q and A link. Um, anyone who's joined. And again, for anyone, if you've joined late um, and you don't have access, uh, this is the link to our Q&A document. Uh, okay, so I also saw a um, question asking about nar teaching narratives related to COVID sequencing of variant, variant um, detection tracking. Uh, so while um, I do wanna remind everybody about um, Kbase's data policy um, and not having human data within Kbase. We do have a narrative that was um, created about sequence analysis of COVID-19. Uh, and this is within the educators org. If you are within the org itself and you go all the way to the bottom because this was created a while ago, uh, there's both a Spanish and English language version of this narrative. And that is um, accessible to everybody who's in, who is in the org. Um, and yeah, again, um, we have a question on um, using for a single lecture, uh, how would I share it with students? Uh, so yeah, it's very dependent on how in depth you want, you would like to go um, for a more, um, for simpler way or approach on how to do it. We've had educators who will preload um, some of the data and have some apps already run. And then for applications that take less time, the students can run those during the lecture um, or the lab itself. Um, and so figuring out that timing, um, it's still very able to do. And I know, Jason, I believe you, last fall, you used um, a narrative and for teaching within a lecture. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, I used my, my narratives and I've used other narratives. As far as uh, sharing with the students that aspect, so we, we've done some show of how you can you know, copy these narratives. But if you want to share it with the students. If you make your, first of all, if you make your own narrative or adapt a narrative from a narrative, you can keep that private and kind of annotate it yourself with uh, questions and answers that you wanna ask in your class. Um, and then from there, you could make a public version and then ask your students to cop copy the public narrative the way that and take out all your annotations, copy the public uh, narrative. And then when they edit that public narrative, that copy, it doesn't impact your version, your private version or the original public version. So um, that's how you can, that's how you can share it with your students and they can, they then have something that they can take with them and have, uh, you know, indefinitely, even after the class. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, 
And so I did want to answer um, this next question. So before a student goes through uh, the KBase tutorial, what prerequisite knowledge about biology and training do you suggest? Um, and this is really going to depend on the student and kind of what your class is. So they're um, so to run any of these, it's it's they're going to need any prerequisite of what you need for your course and then any supporting information. So for using KBase itself, we do have our YouTube page, um, which has which is linked within the QA document. Um, so if you go to our YouTube channel, um, we have a bunch of videos on here. So we have all of our recorded webinars. We also have Katie's tutorials, app tutorials, um, also this um, multi-scale microbial dynamics modeling course um, and other tutorials on different tools that are within KBase, especially new ones that we have um, that are built by community developers. And so, we have a few different playlists and within um, within KBase itself, uh, within our, our webinars, we, we do suggest um, the students watch an intro. And if you don't want to direct them to the intro webinar, we do have the um, user interface guide. So within docs.kbase.us, there are a few different um, user guides. So we have both a quick start guide, which includes this quick start video, which I think it's under seven minutes on run totally how to use, how to use KBase, um, walks through what a narrative is, um, discusses what um, how to get a KBase user account, which is free for all, just have all these um, different materials I'm showing you is free and open for any educator and walks through how to create a narrative, um, finding and working through data, so everything that you might need to know um, on using KBase to first get started, this is what you can um, um, And so this is our um, on our KBase docs page. And yeah, I, just, I just dropped in some uh, extra YouTubes for uh, the narrative that I shared earlier. Oh, thank you, Jason. Um, so there, there is that. And then within our best practices guide, we do have some resources to share with students. So this includes the introduction to KBase webinar. This includes the link to the quick start guide, um, as well as the longer guide to using the narrative, formatting markdown, markdown cells, and that um, activity. Uh, this also includes um, troubleshoot, the troubleshooting section of documentation. So if you do run into any issues, um, how it walks through how to submit a, um, a help desk ticket. Okay, and um, let's see. Oh, so Jason, this is for you. So um, how did you create the nice app workflow um, diagram that you put within your narrative? PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I literally just, uh, uh, I would go to the different uh, application info pages and I would grab the, I would do like a screenshot and I would just grab the icons I really like these icons that they have for the different applications. You know, the, the coloration is nice. It's simple. You kind of you kind of know what what this part is for and that part is for. And then I use the arrows uh, uh, pictures that are in in uh, PowerPoint. And um, yeah, that's it. It's not magic. No, that, I mean, that's a good question there because it is nice to have that workflow um, and that walkthrough. And I think as well, the nice thing about using KBase is that you can also include um, if you if you want, if you're thinking about, OK, how do I um, lead students through this or if I want to help them kind of skip through um, or make sure everything's linked together. The nice thing with the markdown is that you can link to other pages and you can also link within a page. 
or like within the narrative itself. Um, I have an example of that. I have to navigate through my, um, my many tabs. Um, but here within the um, module skeleton that I have, um, which yeah, you can you can use Jason's method of um, you know, if you want to make a workflow, uh, giving a screenshot and just doing a very simple um, walk through that way. Um, and then in addition to that, you can add in a um, add in a table of contents. So within this narrative, um, the, I believe I made a table of contents. In this done it for a few others. Um, here we go. Let's scroll down. Uh, so let's see if I want to just skip right down to our results analysis. I can click on that and that takes us down to our results and um, analysis section. And this is all done through HTML markdown, which is within, um, which is explained within this um, narrative. So double clicking, uh, you can see that I have, I'm just, uh, put in a title and then I've used a hashtag link with the title of that markdown cell, which hyperlinks. Yeah, another thing you can do that's uh, super easy too. So I think it, it's really valuable to, to utilize this uh, narrative that Ellen has created um, because it, it offers a lot more flexibility uh, than, than some of the more simple things that you can do. But um, one thing you can do is you can just double click on a markdown cell if you've, if you've done a screenshot and you can do control P and it will automatically render into an image uh, that whatever you captured uh, when, you, um, when you get out of the editing format part of it. Should I show that Ellen or is that pretty clear? Um, I think, I mean, I think you're welcome to show, share that. Uh, okay. I can look through the questions and see. Okay. Um, so if I were to um, say I wanted to do that, so I, I make a paragraph and then I'm just going to do um, control print screen and then control V and it renders. So that's how, that's how simple it can be, but that, um, that, uh, that, that narrative that Ellen provided uh, offers a lot more flexibility of, of the different things that you can do uh, to make your narrative uh, prettier and, and tell a nicer story. Yeah, there's, there's also the option to, um... If you're interest, interested in um, hosting all your images or embedding video or like adding videos from you or from Google Drive, um, you can embed videos that or embed images that way. And also GIFs. Um, I have put GIFs into narratives using uh, Google Drive links. Um, so that is also a capability, which is really great. Um, let's see. Oh, and thank you. Um, yeah, um, for the docs page, if you are interested in looking up our documentation, um, it's pretty easy. It's uh, docs.kbase.us. And um, if you just type that in, that's how you can find our documentation page. Um, see, I'm seeing if we have any more questions. Uh, I also have. Um, a few examples um, that I can walk to and some other recommendations for those who are just getting started or interested um, in how to access some of these different um, materials. So I know one of the questions I've been asked before, um, aside from, you know, how would you integrate the, these different materials into a class is this is the hands-on um, example. So it's not a replacement for a lecture itself or a textbook, but it is the opportunity for students to go through and to see how the data is analyzed and how to run this themselves. And so that's one thing I, I do want to um, point out is that you are supporting the learning process 
by giving students the opportunity to go through and run their own analysis. And I've actually done this with um, some high school students over the summer. Um, I had some students who created their own narratives and were able to walk through and analyze some meta genomic data themselves, which was really exciting um, and really neat to see because they seemed to pick it up very, very quickly. Um, and this was with myself providing them some example webinars, as well as walking through um, some of the different examples, um, such as you know when you do have students who are learning how to um, use these different tools. And if you're thinking about um, you know how, how do I um, set my students up for success, especially with having these apps that have different parameters and different options to run is that you can um, provide the scaffolding within um, the narrative themself itself. And you can also give them the options to run, um, run apps with some different, um, different parameters to see how that affects the an analysis results. Um, let's see. I, uh, I don't think we have any more questions in the Q&A doc, but I do want to open it up if anyone has uh, a question that they'd like to ask or if they want any, want to see us demo anything live. We still have about seven more minutes. I don't think people can unmute themselves. So if you just write it in the chat, that would be good. Thank you, Ben. Well, I guess I have a question for Jason um, or Carlos, um, because Carlos, you're also on. Um, before I ask that, uh, yes, our, this webinar will be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, so everyone will have access to see it um, once we have it posted up there. Um, if you've attended this webinar, we will send you the link um, and it will be up there. Uh, so Carlos and Jason, I, for both of you, what was one of the biggest challenges for having students come in to use KBase. And if you were to read to, um, you know, as you're using KBase more, what is your approach to introducing them? Jason, should I start? I think the challenge was we were completely online asynchronous. So there wasn't that quick back and forth, immediate feedback of, here's how you log in, we're going to get started. Um, and this is, this is the narrative you'll, you'll, narratives in our case, we will be using. So, so we gave them the quick start guide. We, we had them watch the video. The guide that I was just looking at that has, has been updated since and looks beautiful. I think one of our challenges was um, being able to troubleshoot from a distance without seeing screens, uh, because sometimes we got questions. Um, I know Jason got more questions than I did, but uh, forum posts saying I'm stuck in this step. And, and I'm like, I don't quite know what that step is or how long has it been running? Jason, your turn. Yeah, I mean, it, my thought is that I think KBase was actually a lot easier than some of the other tools that we taught with. Um, mm -hmm. It's any of the challenges that we experienced, I think were uh, just uh, not that not that big of a deal relative to trying to get them on the high performance computing cluster and run chime analyses and things like, um, even, even some of, uh, the GUI tools like Nephili, uh, they don't have the same storytelling narrative capability. And so it's a little bit harder to get the students to follow along. You just have to, you have to be very, very um, 
you, you either you want to provide some kind of introduction video, and we did that too with our K-based narratives, or have the time uh, to be able to talk to them, which we couldn't do in our asynchronous class, um, other than in office hours if they if they chose okay. to come. But you highlight something really important that that structure of the narratives um, and being able to add annotations or text describing this, uh, we're doing this in this step. And then you did it with graphics too. And then that really aligns or ties back to some of our lecture objectives or um, which were defining mags or defining um, uh, different metrics of diversity. Um, so they had the conceptual background and what Kiwis does that's really nice. It, it gives them that um, almost fearless opportunity to click through play uh, with big data sets and you can make it as structured as you want. And some can be cookbook-ish. And then at the end, we, we you remove or you fade out the scaffolding and you say, we did this. Now you go find a data set and do the same thing or search for something you're interested in. And, yeah. and that's harder to do getting people on the HPC and command line. Yeah, thank you so much, Carlos. That is, um, that is a great point because we really try to give students the opportunity to um, explore and plug and play themselves. And I know we have a whole bunch of new, um, new members for the K-Base Educators Org. So if you have joined the org um, and you're in here and do you want to view a narrative for the first time, um, for me, I've viewed a lot of these narratives, so, um, but there is one that I have yet to view. And so it does come up as saying, I have no access, um, but it has right here, click for view access. This is what it will look like to those of you who have not yet opened a narrative. So if you, are looking to access a narrative, you just need to click this button here, click for view access. And once you've clicked that, now you can see the formats changed and then I can click on the title of this narrative and it, will, it is opening up for me. So if you're having, um, if you're struggling to open up any of these new narratives, that is the way to go. I've also um, written this into the best practices guide um, I think a little bit up to the top of um, reviewing narratives um, or using the educators org. Um, yes, yeah, right here. So accessing a narrative in the org um, right here. If you haven't opened it, you have to click the click for access or view access button. Um, and once you click that, you are then able to access and read um, any of those narratives to make your own copies. Um, edit them, share them with your students, and have fun. Uh, so with that, I think we are at the end of uh, the hour. Um, and yes, so for accessing the best practices guide, um, I do, there is a link. Um, if you would like to send us an email at engage at kbase.us, uh, we can get you set up to um, other resources within our Google Drive folder. Um, I have the, um, the email up top um, and instructions for joining um, the educators. So please send us an email. Um, let us know if you'd also like to join our um, educators Slack, um, Slack channel. We can get you in there as well. Um, and with that, uh, thank you all so much. Um, for joining us and for asking your questions. Uh, I hope that uh, you're able to more easily share these different resources um, with your students and include these within your curriculum. Thanks for watching this webinar. For more webinars and tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see announcements for upcoming webinars and recordings for previous webinars on our website at kbase.us learn. 
Let us know in the comments what content you'd like to see in future webinars. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at DOE KBase. And if you have questions or encounter an error when using KBase, please contact the help desk.